with the first part of the workshop you should have discovered that the websites that I provided are either obviously not credible or obviously quite credible. In reality when you look online or even listen to the TV it's not always that obvious whether the information you are reading or hearing is true. And this is particularly important in today's society when we hear things like fake news, alternative facts, truth is not truth. So the crack app test is just one tool for you to use to help you evaluate the information right in front of you. At the end of the day you will have to make a judgment call on the information particularly when you start writing your papers and decide to cite or not to cite. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go from websites to articles. Now a database is a collection of information. The way you can search for articles and other documents is through the use of a database. Most databases use Boolean operators to conduct a search. If I click on this slide, you can see that there are three main types of Boolean operators, and or not. And you use these operators between keywords to narrow or broaden your search. For example, ATP and mitochondria instructs the database to retrieve all documents that contain ATP and mitochondria. And here you are narrowing your search. With the all operator, you are using it to broaden the search. For example, ATP or adenosine triphosphate tells the database to retrieve all documents that contain ATP or adenosine triphosphate. The OR operator is generally used with synonyms. These are similar words. So you're searching for these similar keywords within the literature so you don't miss anything out within the literature. Then there's the NOT operator. For instance, ATP NOT mitochondria tells the database to find or retrieve all documents that contain ATP but not mitochondria and not ATP and mitochondria. And here you are narrowing your search. So if I go back, there are a number of different databases that you can use for searching. For instance, uh, Academic Search Premier, Web of Science, PubMed, Google Scholar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of these, um, Academic Search Premier. If I click on it, and here you have the interface. This is the front page of the database. And you can see that you have boxes here. And between the boxes where you put your keywords, these are the Boolean operators. And if you scroll down a wee bit, you can see the different parameters that you can use to um, refine your search. So if I'm going to be searching for catalase and temperature, I can type in catalase in the box. And temperature in the next box. Now next to each of the boxes is a field option. This is the field box. So if I click on one of the field options, you can, it shows you the different fields for where your keyword can be searched within the database. If I select all text, it will search for that keyword anywhere in the text within all the documents. Author, it will search for that keyword as the author's last name title it will search for that keyword in the titles of all the documents and retrieve those documents and so on. So I'm going to select all text for each one and here I'm going to select apply related words and apply equivalent subjects for your keywords. If I scroll down 
I can also select peer review journals and there's other things other parameters that you can uh, refine your search for, uh, for the, within the database but I'm going to leave it as this click on search and let's see what happens and here you can see that I have over 18,000 hits over 18,000 different documents now nobody's going to read 18,000 documents so you're going to need to narrow your search a little bit uh, you can narrow your search by adding more keywords. You can narrow it by refining the field option. For instance, uh, I can select title uh, for this keyword. So it's going to retrieve all documents that contain catalase in the title and temperature anywhere in the text. Click on search. And now it's gone down to over just over 400 uh, results. On the left hand side of the actual database are more options to refine your results. So you can refine it for example by the year range. This is a level indicator where you can uh, move to refine the year range. Let's make it from 2003 to 2019. It's gone slightly down to uh, uh, just almost 400 hits. Uh, there are other options here as well. For instance, uh, you can select under thesaurus terms, subject, and so forth. So you can experiment with your searches. I'm going to select hydrogen peroxide. Usually a good hit set is between 50 and 100. That way you can quickly browse your the documents and see which ones are relevant to what you are searching for. And here I have 73. Each one of these has a title. This is the title of the document. And below the title is some information about the author's names, uh, the name of the journal, the volume, sometimes the issue, and the page numbers. Now each one of these records or documents has a find it button. If you click on the find it button, it will go to our catalogue and it will tell you if we have the full text available. Some of these documents have a PDF. So let me see if I can find a PDF here. Here you can see there's a PDF here. So you can just click on the PDF and the full text will open. If it doesn't have a PDF, it doesn't mean that we don't have access to that document. It just means that it's not available from this resource. So if I, what I usually do is I click on a document, the title. If you click on it, you'll go to the record, and here you'll be able to see where your key terms have appeared. Okay, you have catalase, hydrogen peroxide, temperature, it's in bold. Now within this record, on the right hand side, you have more options to work with your documents. A cool option here is called the site icon. If I click on the site icon, this resource, this database, cites the actual document in different citation styles automatically. Here I have APA, Chicago, Harvard, and so on. So let's go, let's go down to APA, because this is what I'm looking for. So this is the citation for APA for that document. Now this is generally computerized. So it's computer generated. When something is computer generated, it's not always 100%. It's usually about 80 to 100%. So what I often tell students is that if you want your B, cut and paste. If you want your A, you look and check to make sure everything is in the right order for that citation style. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So this is the one that I wanted. So let me just click on it again. Okay, back to the record. Okay, this was the site. I I'm going to want to retrieve the full text. 
So I'm going to click on the Find It button, and click it on it in the record. It goes to our catalog and it will tell you if we have the full text available. If the library has access to the full text of the document, it will state as shown here full text available at and you'll see a link. Sometimes there will be several different links. These links are to perhaps resources or vendors or different publisher sites where you can access the full text. If there is no full text available for your document, it will state no full text available. And if you still want that document, in that case you will have to sign in. There's a sign in button, so you click on that, sign in with your username and password, and a request link will then appear here. You would just need to click on that request link. It will come to us, the library, and we will try to find you the full text on that document and then send it to your email address within a few days. Now here, with this document, I can see that it's available from this resource. So let me just click on that. So this is the actual document. I want to download the PDF, so just click on download PDF. So here we have the PDF of the article. At the top you can see the title of the article, followed by the names of the researchers, and then the place where the research was conducted. The general makeup of an article starts off with an abstract. The abstract is usually just one paragraph that summarizes and highlights the research and main results from the article. Below the abstract, we can see the introduction, which often gives just the background information about the research. As I scroll down, you'll be able to see the experimental section. Here the experimental section is headed as materials and methods. Other articles headed as experimental or methodology or methods. The experimental section is a good indicator that this is indeed a research article. If I scroll down a bit more, you can see some diagrams here and eventually you come to the results section followed by the discussion section and again you can see more graphs here and figures and at the end there's a conclusion or conclusion section followed by the acknowledgments sometimes you get a supplementary material or supporting material heading and there you can access more information about the actual experiment from the article about the research and finally you have some references the key results from an article can often be found in the abstract or at the end in the uh, conclusion. If I go back to my database, my hit results, I want to mention just two more things. Next to each one of these documents is a folder. So if you click on the folder and you can click on the documents that you have interest in, so say I'm interested in this one, this one, as well as the first one, and then if you click on the folder at the top, you will come up to all the um, hits that you've selected. So you can select all of the documents, click on the right hand side email, and you can email those documents to to your email address. So just plug in your email address, you can select citation format, say APA, and then click on send. If I go back, the last thing I'd like to just mention is choose databases at the top. 
Now if you click on this link, this will give you information about all the databases within EBSCO Hosts. And I've just searched Academic Search Premier, but you can search other databases simultaneously by just selecting on the box here. Now some of these databases are not related to your subject field. For example, MathSciNet, if I click on the pop-up here, it gives you some information about the content of that resource. Here it you can see it contains mathematical information. So that's not related to biological information. So you may not want to select that one. Sinel, on the other hand, if I select on this and click on the pop-up, this resource database has information related to nursing and allied health journals. So that might be something that might be of interest depending on the topic that you're searching. So if I, for instance, if I just select on that, click OK. And then at the top, if I click Show All, I now will be searching Academic Search Premier and CINAHL and I will be able to retrieve results from those two resources. So what I want you to do for 15 minutes is just to experiment and play around with this database. You will need to find two articles and you need to add them on your worksheet. So here is the worksheet. So what you're going to be doing is you can use the information from this part of the, ex of the lesson to search for information related to the enzyme catalase and the research question in open discovery number one. So it could be catalase and temperature or pH or concentration. And you will need to find two articles and then cite them in APA format. This is the general formula used for APA format. So you start off with the authors, the year, the title of the article, the title of the periodical in italics, volume, the issue number, if there is an issue number, then the page ranges. At the end, you will need to put in the DOI number. The DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. It's a unique number for an article, very much reminiscent to your social security number. One person, one social security number, one article, one DOI number. So if the article has a DOI number, add that. And you will need to fill in the boxes here. Keywords, so it's catalase. Uh, with my search, I, had to put, I will need to put temperature in here as well. Boolean operators used, so it's going to be catalase and temperature. Database use, academic search premier. And you can put in the uh, articles here within these two boxes, your two articles. Then the key result from Article 1 and the key result from Article 2. Okay. And as I mentioned, this can be often found in the summary, the i.e. the abstract or the conclusion of the article. So that's pretty much it for this part. I'll give you 15 minutes. Thank you.